Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we will be talking about a man so vile that he had to flee his own country and hide in one of the islands in the Philippines. Today we will be talking about Peter Scully and Daisy's destruction. Peter Gerard Scully was born on January 13, 1963 in Melbourne, Australia. He grew up to be a very wealthy and successful businessman and lived quite a luxurious life with his wife and two kids. Now, on the outside, he seemed to have the perfect life. He was said to be charming and friendly, but behind closed doors, he was definitely something else. It was the complete opposite. Peter Scully committed so many investment schemes and frauds that the total amount of money he owed people totaled to 2.6 million Australian dollars and that is a lot of money. It was also discovered that he was running an illegal escort service with only one woman, a Malaysian woman who was also apparently his mistress. Now, once he found out that the authorities were onto him, he decided to flee the country right away. He left everything and everyone behind, including his family, his wife and two kids who had no idea where he went. Now, fast forward to 2014, a video or film called Daisy's Destruction leaked on the internet. Now, this film was originally uploaded and created for the dark web, but it somehow made its way to the surface web. Now, um, the surface web is the part of the internet that regular people like you and I get to access on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, now, I don't want to put in to detail the full extent of what happens in this film, but just to give you guys a gist of what it's about, Easy's Destruction is a four-part film that is around an hour long in total, and it involves one man, two women, and three children, or three little girls. Now... These three little girls were soon found to be 12, 11 years old, and 18 months old, so a year and a half. So basically, this film depicts the sexual abuse and torture of these three little girls. So Daisy's Destruction was categorized under the genre Hurtcore. And if you're not familiar to Hurtcore, like I was, um... Basically, according to my research, Hurtcore is an extreme form of porn focusing on hardcore affliction of pain, torture, and humiliation, mainly on children, including toddlers. So just from the definition itself, I'm sure you can tell how heartless and sick in the mind one can be to be able to do something like this and to actually enjoy this type of entertainment. But Daisy's destruction was so vile and so disgusting that it made even the worst of the worst sick to their stomachs. So it gained a lot of negative reviews and negative comments from these pedophiles in this dark web community and even hardcore, hurtcore fanatics that have seen it said that it was really, really awful to watch and they are still traumatized up to this day. Daisy's destruction became such a hot topic on the dark web to the point where it almost became an urban legend because not a lot of people have seen it or accessed it because according to reports, to be able to access all four parts of this film, one would have to pay 10,000 US dollars. Which is insane. Um, people actually pay to see these things and that is very, very concerning. Um, anyway, once it leaked to the surface web, the Dutch police immediately got hold of it. However, they didn't know where to begin. 
The authorities had no idea where this video came from and who were the people in this video. Now, this soon became a worldwide investigation and authorities from all over the world started to help out. Now, the first step in finding out who made this monstrosity of a video, the authorities would of course need to know where this came from or where it was created. And as I have mentioned, there were three adults involved. A white man who was mostly directing and doing the camera work and two masked women who had very tan skin and spoke in broken English. Now, these two women were most probably both Asian and were in their late teens and the man was probably a person from an English-speaking country, so the US, the UK, Australia, Canada. Now, the three children, on the other hand, um, their faces were shown and they were obviously from the Philippines. Like what I said earlier, this became a worldwide investigation. So a lot of the English-speaking countries that I mentioned, they started to look at this video and really listen carefully just to figure out where this man is from and soon enough the Australian police got involved because they recognized this man's accent to be of an Australian accent. So they started to look at different unsolved cases and runaways and that is when they remembered this guy named Peter Scully. Now although most of his crimes were based in Australia or done in Australia and consisted of frauds and investment schemes, Something like Daisy's destruction wasn't really that far off because, as I have said earlier, Peter Scully did run an illegal escort service with his mistress. Now, this man had over 70 charges against him, but he fled Australia to avoid getting arrested. And aside from his secret double life, Peter Scully actually lived a pretty normal or regular life, just like everyone else. So at the time he was in his late 40s, he lived in a nice house in a pretty good neighborhood with his wife and two kids. Also, it was said that he was living an almost perfect life. He ran a few businesses. He had a lot of friends. He was very social. He was very smart and successful. However... This was all for show. So during the day, he was this very wholesome family man, but a serial fraudster by night. And not only that, um, all of his crimes in Australia surfaced from 2011 to 2012. And once Peter heard that the authorities were onto him, he decided to flee the country right away. Now... They were unaware of where he was headed and they initially thought that he fled to Malaysia with his escort girlfriend until two years later when this whole Daisy's Destruction video came out. Now, the Australian police started working with the authorities in the Philippines and even though the Philippines is a small country, we do have more than 7,000 islands here. So where do they begin the search? Now, a manhunt for Peter Scully started right away. However, this wasn't an easy task to do because, as I've mentioned, there are a lot of islands here in the Philippines. But eventually, three years later, they did locate him in a city called Malay Balay. And this was in 2015. Now, once an arrest was made, the authorities also found the little girls who were involved in this video or film. Now, as I've mentioned, there were three little girls, a 12-year-old, an 11-year-old, and an 18-month-old toddler. Now, out of these three girls, only two were found. 12-year-old girl, um, she was doing a lot better, but of course, she was still very traumatized about what happened to her. And... Daisy, the 18-month-old baby who was featured in this film, 
was also alive. Um, however, due to the severe injuries that she received during the making of this film and during the rest of her time with Peter, Daisy sadly sustained lifelong injuries or permanent damage to some of her organs. Um, so she will never be fully healthy. But the really, really, really sad part is that the authorities also never found the 11-year-old girl because it was later revealed that Peter Scully had actually strangled this little girl to death um, after he made her dig her own grave. Now, she was buried under the floor floorboards or the tiles of one of the apartments that he lived in and they actually showed a clip um, on 60 Minutes Australia wherein they dug up this little girl's final resting place and they did find her skeletal remains there. Now uh, the two masked women were also arrested and they were 18 year old Carmi Ann Alvarez Carmi Ann Alvarez and 19-year-old Lizelle Margallo. Now, apparently, these two women were also taken off the streets by Peter Scully himself when they were both children or minors. I'm not sure how old they were, but it was a very weird setup wherein Peter took them in as like adopted children or foster kids, but he eventually groomed them to be his girlfriends. Now, he did groom these women and then had them work as sex workers. He would rent them off to other men, but at the same time, whenever he, whenever they were with him, he would also sexually assault them. Now, these girls, they didn't have families, they were orphans, and they didn't really have any idea what a healthy family relationship was. So, they really thought that this was normal. Now, if you're wondering as to how they were finally caught by the authorities, Alvarez confessed that she was the one who was usually tasked to find little girls for Peter to adopt. And at first, she would hesitate because she knew what would happen to these little girls. The same thing that happened to her and Lizelle. So, but eventually, Peter did convince her, saying that this was a good thing because she would be able to help other children and that these children would be taken care of and well fed and that their lives would change for the better so she eventually agreed and that's when she found two street children cousins who were 9 and 12 years old now these two little girls were lured in with the idea that they were going to be fed and taken care of and as soon as peter scully met these two girls they were given food now, this was to assure them that he had good or positive intentions. But once they were done with their meal, Peter Scully had these girls stripped naked and started taking photos of them to have it uploaded in the dark web. And he didn't stop there. Of course, he is a monster. So he also took videos of them doing things to each other other now he did direct them what to do and he also posted these in the dark web before starting to assault and torture the little girls himself behind the camera the very next day peter scully took these little girls on the back garden of the house that he was staying at and he asked them to start digging. Now, these two little girls had no idea what was going on until Peter told them that once he was done with them, they would actually be killed and buried on these graves that they were digging up themselves. Now, miraculously, five days later, 
the 18 year old Carmi Alvarez starts to feel some remorse and he starts to feel a little guilty and sorry for these little girls when she saw them chained up like dogs they were wearing dog chains and dog collars luckily these two little girls did muster up the courage to come forward and tell the authorities what was done to them and they pointed them to the direction of peter scully's residence this is how they were arrested and this is how the authorities were finally able to track him down after years of searching of course since he was the main suspect for the daisy's destruction video all of peter scully's electronics were seized by the authorities however before it was even checked the room holding in all of this evidence suddenly burns down that just that very room and this fire destroyed everything in connection to the daisy's destruction video as well as any other activities that he had going on in the dark web now because of this he was only charged with the kidnapping rape and torture of those two brave little girls the nine and 12 year old cousins as well as some charges regarding human trafficking. Peter Scully was finally found guilty in 2018. Now, he did avoid getting the death penalty because just a year prior, a law here in the Philippines was passed that anyone who has a rape charge isn't eligible for the death penalty. However, I think that is actually a good thing because getting the death penalty seems like an easy way out especially for the types or the especially for the severity of the crimes that he did now along with peter scully carmi and alvarez was also arrested and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole the last thing i heard peter is still here in the Philippines, he's still imprisoned here. I'm not sure if he was moved or he will be moved back to his home country of Australia. But yeah, I'm just... This is such a bad case. It's terrible to research. It took me a while because I needed some mental health breaks in between, to be honest with you guys. And I avoided so many articles and so many videos that had a lot of the more graphic details as to the videos that were posted and i just really don't want to find out what happens in those videos it's just kind of refreshing to know that this man will never see the light of the day again and i just hope that nothing like this ever happens to anyone ever again as i've mentioned there was a little girl who died that little girl dug up her own grave there was a little girl who sustained permanent injuries because of this and of course the other ones who survived they will bring this trauma with them their whole lives and yeah i guess that's pretty much it for this video um Thank you so much for listening to the story of these little girls. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you found it interesting and subscribe if you haven't. All of my social media handles will be listed down below. So go ahead and check that out if you want. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all on my next video.